Hello everybody, it's Lazel again, back with another video. And today's video is gonna be a bit longer, but uh, I'll definitely need the time because today I want to explain the current hype around cavalry as a frontline unit and there's actually a lot to talk about. Um, I also wrote down a few notes, so I'm trying to keep track of this because uh, yeah, I don't want it to get too confusing. Um, but maybe some of you have already realized that a lot of players um, start to use cavalry as a frontline unit and they have a huge success with it. Cavalry became very strong if you bring the correct setup and the correct technology. And today I kind of want to explain um, why I think this is something pretty cool and I want to break down why it is so strong. So um, to keep, yeah, I think we should start at the basics uh, with, with all of this because we should take a look at the unit itself. And I want to say that I am a C35 right now. And if you would be a C40 or something like that, um, you would always, send your strongest troops. Um, I know that, for example, from, from the um, tier 12 infantry or cavalry, they have pretty nice stats. But in this video, I will just focus on the tier 11 or tier 13 units um, to compare those stats because the most players that I see that are, for example, um, C35 don't send tier 10 units, they always send tier 11 as a frontline. So I want to compare those units instead of also bringing in the tier 10 or tier 12 units. I think we should get right into it because um, when we compare cavalry and infantry, which can be your frontline units, um, cavalry is actually always not that good from the stats. If we compare tier 11 cavalry and infantry, you can see that tier 11 infantry has 1.9k health points and cavalry has 1.8, so a total difference of 100 health points. Uh, from attack, cavalry is a bit stronger, but 130 from the infantry to 146 from the cavalry. So they are a bit stronger when it comes to attacking as a frontline unit. But from defense, they are also weaker. They have 105 defense and T11 infantry has 109. So we can basically say the base stats from health and defense, which are important for a frontline unit that wants to absorb and tank as much damage as possible. Infantry um, is better from the base stats for sure. Um, yeah, range infantry has 0 0.5, cavalry has 0 0.9, so they start to hit a bit earlier. Um, it might have a bit of impact on the total army arrangement because they start to hit a bit earlier, they, so they stop moving earlier and stuff like that. So it's like um, there might be some differences when it comes to adjusting your army. But yeah, then they have a higher movement speed than infantry and they can load more resources than infantry. And now I want to come to the point why they are stronger. So from the base stats themselves, they are not stronger than uh, at least when it comes to, to health and defense, they are not stronger than infantry. But the tier 11 infantry has the big downside that their passive skill, blockade, uh, doesn't work when you're attacking. It only raises the health points when you're on the defending side. So when you're attacking with them, they actually don't have any passive skill working for them. And when, and when we look into cavalry, with their archer resistance, they have reduced damage from archers. Doesn't matter if you're attacking or if you're defending. So that is already a big advantage of cavalry as a frontline unit. Because, uh, for example, um, you can see yourself in an SOS situation. So you basically send like, yeah, your strongest frontline unit, uh, which would be T11 infantry or T11 cavalry. 
and you know from the opponent's units, all eight units would start to hit um, pretty fast into your frontline units. And if you know that two of those units deal 25% less damage, that's already a big advantage. Of course, now people would say, yeah, the T11 mages deal 30% bonus damage against cavalry. That is correct. But what you also need to see that the, for example, tier 10 archers deal bonus damage against infantry. So the argument isn't not valid to say um, that um, from backline units, um, there will always be, or there will always be a damage advantage against your front line. But if your front line has a damage resistance against one of the enemy backline units, when you're attacking, um, so far I have always seen castles that have archers and mages. And if your frontline unit brings the advantage of having resistance against one of those units, you will always be on an advantage. And if your tier 11 infantry doesn't bring a passive skill with that, that is a big loss for them. So it kind of already compensates. And I know we could do exact math about it, but just to explain, um, cavalry has a bit less base stats uh, compared to T11 infantry, but it kind of gets compensated by the fact that they have archer resistance and take 25% less damage from them. And that is, in my opinion, already a very big advantage of cavalry because if the base or the unit itself already brings a, uh, an advantage against one troop type, you just have to focus on the other troop type to reduce the damage as far as possible. And now coming to that, um, now the game has evolved. There has been a lot of new features into the game and you now can do stuff like that. For example, as an enhancement, you can go to your chest plate and find those enhancements that say um, reduces damage from a certain unit. So what is a requirement to play your cavalry as a frontline unit is to bring this or to is to search for a lot of technology that reduces damage from mages because you already have the advantage from the cavalry itself to take reduce damage from archers. So you kind of just have to focus on reduce damage from mages also because a lot of mages uh, doesn't matter if it's um, the tier 10, for example, or the tier 11, if you are attacking, and we are only talking about cavalry as an attacking frontline unit, um, mages will always have an advantage against cavalry. By the tier 10, for example, bonus damage to all soldiers during city defense by 15%, and the odd infantry mages, uh, odd mages, um, they deal bonus damage against cavalry. So if you focus your technology on um, just reduce damage from mages, you will get a huge overall advantage because if you're attacking, mages will always deal a huge amount of bonus damage if you have cavalry as a frontline unit. And if you then just have to focus on reduce damage from mages, you have another huge advantage which makes cavalry so strong. So it is a requirement to look for these enhancements, for example, uh, reduce damage from mages I mean, you can also search for, for example, cavalry defense here down there by 6%, um, because there are a lot of other options how you can reduce the damage from mages. For example, you also have the Colossus. If you would put your cavalry as a frontline unit, you would focus on stuff like, for example, the HP, the defense, and reduce here, cavalry take less damage from mages. You would focus on these things to reduce the damage from mages overall um, to give your cavalry an even more advantage or an even higher advantage. In addition, uh, with artifacts, there are a lot of artifacts that also reduce the damage from mages. For example, the Gusli artifact does it. Um, then we have the golden armor that maybe do that does it. The um, Kellet Witch, for example, does it too. Um, you would search for an adjustment, uh, an adjustment of artifacts that also benefit reduced damage, damage from mages uh, to increase this 
even farther. So your cavalry takes even less damage from mages because mages are the downside when we are coming to cavalry because um, yeah, by this tier 10 or tier 11 with their passive skills to increase the damage against uh, even if they are defending or against cavalry, you can reduce that with all of those enhancements, artifacts, your colossus. And because your cavalry has this archer resistance, they are also pretty tough again for cavalry, uh, for archers. And archers don't have additional damage on cavalry, they just do additional damage against mages and against an, uh, infantry. So you outweigh this. Um, pretty hard if you focus on reduced damage from mages. Of course, you shouldn't lag in cavalry HP and cavalry, cavalry defense and stuff. You should find a pretty healthy mix about that. But just saying, now that we have the options to find enhancements, to, to work with artifacts, to adjust your colossus and stuff like that, uh, the, um, the hype of cavalry began or um, got way more or got way more support with all of these things because now we can reduce the damage from mages. Uh, so we compared the stats of in, uh, between infantry and cavalry. Um, we have the we have talked about all the bonus damages units can have and deal and stuff like that um, and why it is so important to have reduced damage from mages on your enhancements, on your colossus, and on your artifacts. And now we are coming to the next point, because with the Mystic College, you can research pretty interesting stuff for, uh, stuff for the cavalry, because we are starting with the dodge ability. And this ability says cavalry have a zero uh, or at the first stage, 3.5 percentage chance to dodge enemy attacks and this goes up if you have it at level 5 we are talking about 16 percent and now you have to imagine again if you're in your sos situation your cavalry gets hit by eight to nine units every time and there's always a 16 percent chance that the cavalry dodges those attacks um, so the dodge mechanic is pretty interesting but you're also gambling with this. It's not like when we are talking about the acceleration skill from the infantry or with the toughness skill. Those are fixed stats. They are always active and you can kind of calculate with them. But the dodge mechanic is like, it's, it's a bit of gamble. You can have a lot of triggers from it in a row, but you also can have not that many triggers. It's a bit of gambling. Um, but still, it's pretty nice if you, you can do very big hits on a big target. For example, if your opponent has like 500k mages and you are able to, de to dodge one of those attacks, um, the opponent loses so much damage, it can have a very high impact if you dodge all those attacks. Um, the dodge sk skill is very interesting and yeah, it also gave cavalry a lot of strength and makes them more reasonable and effective as a frontline unit. Now, the second skill, the Savage Impact, gives your cavalry the chance on an attack to stun the unit that they are attacking. It is pretty nice because the stunned unit is not able to attack anymore. But it's not. And yeah, by that, you also delay the damage that the unit deals. And at level 5, it is at 21%. I just saw that in a report lately. And 25, uh, 21% is also pretty high. So it is nice to delay the damage and to stun the unit so it can't hit anymore. For example, if you are able to uh, reduce the enemy frontline pretty fast and if you are able to stun the enemy angels, um, they won't be able to cast a sacred flame to do the normal hit. Maybe also with a flame missile ability that deals um, area of effect damage and you are able to stun those angels. You also reduce the damage output in total uh, by a lot in my opinion. But I don't think that the savage impact um, makes them so reasonable as a frontline unit. I think that the dodge mechanic, the reduced damage from mages and their passive skill of reduced damage from archers makes them very strong. And 
Yeah, so we just talked about the mystic skills, we talked about the enhancements, the colossus and stuff, the reduced damage from mages, how important it is. And now I want to add something else. Um, when we are talking about cavalry as a frontline unit, we are only talking about solo hits if you're attacking alone. You are still, you cannot really bring cavalry to a team fight because we all know how your um, army setup is done. Let me quickly see if I find any attack. Yeah, no, not this. Maybe this. Yeah, you can see the cavalry always stands on the outside and always gets hit, gets hit by the mages that are also on the outside. Sadly, in this report, um, the opponent doesn't have mages on the outer sides. Yeah, okay, there a bit, but my cavalry already got killed. But yeah, you can see that the cavalry always try to take their basic spot in the army formation, which is on the outside. And if you bring cavalry as a frontline unit and you bring no infantry, they will take the place of the infantry. So, and um, when we are... Yeah, so I just want to say this is just interesting for solo attacks to use cavalry as a frontline unit. And uh, upward, yeah, I can, I will only feature uh, equipment upwards from from C30 or level 30 uh, because I don't want to get down to all those 25 or 20 gear. I think uh, your main priority is to get to C30 as soon as possible for the asset mine. Um, but coming to your gear your equipment cavalry has pretty nice and pretty good featured equipments um, i just want to give yeah we can maybe check out a few of those and compare them to the other things um, of course the weapon itself the mastery staff compared to the fiery crossbow on level 45 it looks pretty nice um, to have the mastery staff for this uh, mage attack and the army size limit. But there is pretty nice gear around cavalry. And I personally think that cavalry is, a, is doing very well if you feature them with archers. And we will come into this now for a bit, yeah, a bit better. We have, for example, on the fiery crossbow, we have the double archer attack and cavalry attack in addition and remember that the base stat of cavalry uh, the attack base stat on, of cavalry is a bit higher than from the infantry and with this weapon it also increases the cavalry attack and you have the double archer attack um, coming to belts the eternity belt with infantry attack mage attack and angel limit is is a very good belt but on 35 for example you also have this archer attack cavalry hp so it increases the health pool of your frontline unit and angel hp uh, also pretty nice but no limit you can still forge an, another belt to increase the angel limit and look for the angel limit enhancement on the belt when you're using cavalry as a frontline unit but this would be your fighting belt but now we are coming to the gear part which i think um, also makes cavalry so powerful as a solo frontline unit because com uh, combining cavalry with archers and we all know if you're a solo player you also want to bring your angels uh, the perfect heart makes it very reasonable to play cavalry as a frontline unit because when we combine cavalry a, a very good combination with uh, cavalry are archers and on the perfect heart, of course, you have that infantry attack that has no meaning for us as cavalry, as a frontline unit, but you have the archer attack and you have the angel attack. And if you have a frontline that dodges attack that almost takes, yeah, a very high amount of reduced damage from mages, that has a reduced damage from archers as a basic stat on cav as, yeah, as cavalry has, um, your angels don't need health. Your angels or your backline overall need damage. And a good combination of cavalry are archers. And combining this with the perfect heart that increases your angel attack, it's very powerful. The thing is that increasing your angel attack isn't easy. There aren't many, there aren't, or there is only, 
I think one enhancement that increases um, angel attack and it isn't on your weapon. You can find it there. I don't know if there's still another enhancement that directly increases your angel attack. Yeah, I think that there's only this one. And um, yeah, on gear parts, the path in the perfect heart um, on 35 is the only one that increases your angel attack and it does that by 21% and then in combination with the sacred flame and the flame missile it has a very very high impact uh, on a battle or on a solo attack. So this already looks very nice and now we will build up a bit on this because I think that the archer, uh, the cavalry archer angel setup is very nice and um, we will continue this also with the gear of the Royal Crown. You have double cavalry HP. You have army size limits, so you can bring more cavalry or even more archers. You will always want to bring your maximum amount of angels. And it also increases your angel limit. And your fighting gear, you always want this on orange to get the maximum output of technology. And with that, you can even bring more angels. And wearing on 35, for example, wearing this Radiance belt, you get increased Angel HP, so they are a bit more uh, healthy. You get this Cavalry HP, you get the Archer attack. And besides that, you can still forge this Purple Eternity belt, search for the enhancement of Angel limit increased and have a very high Angel limit than an Infantry um, mage angel player might have so the setup going for cavalry archers angels is extremely powerful and most players that i see that play cavalry as a frontline unit play cavalry angel archer and it is so powerful because you can get a huge count of angels you can get um, a lot of angel attack from the perfect heart and in addition also archer attack and just have a very, uh, you have a very, very strong backline. Uh, in addition, this is the, <laughs> this is my meaning of today, and um, it will, it might change in the future. We don't know yet. But coming to armors, um, now I have to speak uh, quickly for the level thirty armor for infantry. It is a very, very good armor because you have the double infantry defense, the recruitment speed and the march speed. Pretty nice. And there's not a very similar or good uh, chest plate for cavalry players because you always miss this one additional cavalry defense. For example, here we have cavalry defense and archer defense. Not that good as the Templar armor. Um, the... It was the dragon scale. Yeah, here in the armor of hymns, you also have just this one cavalry defense. So also not, this, not that interesting. But coming to the level 35 armor, we have the Titan armor where you have just one infantry defense. And on the celestial armor, you have double cavalry defense and also a little favorite of mine, stamina recovery. So you just need one chest. Um, of the chests that you have are uh, just they uh, give you this ca double cavalry defense on level 35 while as an infantry mage player um, you should play with the templar armor due to the double infantry defense but they are on the level 35 uh, on the level 30 templar armor you just have this double 19 percent of infantry defense while you have on this level 35 armor you have this double 21 percent and we are talking about a total difference of four percent might not sound much but would add up or will add up in the end and uh, just just a quick spoiler the guardian breastplate massive <laughs> this thing is so strong in my opinion you have double cavalry defense on a chest plate, you bring angel attack and stamina recovery. Um, angel setup with cavalry and archers, I think this is a thing that many people will head for when they are going for the C40 and um, very strong in my opinion.
Uh, coming to the boots, um, we have on 30, we have this Archer Mage Monster Attack Speed Stamina Recovery Boots. Uh, you have the Dragon Rider Boots, which are, yeah, you can completely ignore them. Nobody would forge them. I personally uh, would recommend not to forge these. But you have the Dusk Boots. And here comes, once again, you have this Cavalry Attack and Archer Attack all on Boots. There are no, or there are these boots that increase your mage attack, but <laughs> we are talking about level five boots by four percent. So, um, uh, what I want to say overall, there are just very good gear parts that benefit for cavalry, and um, I just quickly want to remind again, we are talking about solo attacks. Cavalry is a frontline unit in solo attacks. Because you don't want to bring infantry, so your cavalry stands in the middle of the battle. And um, yeah, just, just a lot of gear parts really benefit or are awesome for cavalry as a frontline unit. Also, the Monarch boots, uh, cavalry attack, cavalry HP. Uh, I did a bit of math on this and overall the, the gear for cavalry uh, outperforms the gear for infantry and gives them sometimes way more defense and way more HP. So your gear also compensates what you miss on the basic stats. And if you send this um, cavalry odd unit, uh, which should always be the strongest if you have your castle maxed out, I know Castle level C40 uh, is very far away for a lot of us, uh, but as I said in the beginning of the video, this is just my thinking. Um, it really compensates that and you have the passive skill active with archer resistance when you're attacking. And then you just work on reduced damage from mages and it, it really adds up in, in my opinion. So um, this is... Yeah, now explain by me why Cavalry is such a very hyped and reasonable frontline unit for solo attacks. Um, I might have missed a few points. If I missed anything, if you want to get a bit more details on stuff and how I think, what would be a good gear setup, um, let me know down in the comments below. I think that I catched up on everything that's important for Cavalry as a frontline unit. Yeah, and as I said, if I missed something, let me know down in the comments below. And I just quickly want to point out, uh, because I think that this setup is so interesting that I'm starting to um, build my alternative castle, my second castle, my C30, now as a cavalry frontline castle with archers and angels on focus. Um, it will still take a lot of time and resources to get uh, a few basic things done. Um, but I hope that I can uh, bring a lot of cavalry frontline content pretty soon. And yeah, I hope you guys are excited. I am because I think cavalry is a very, very reasonable and powerful frontline unit. Yeah, and I hope that I can bring content pretty fast. Yeah, and as I said, if you want to get a bit more information or you think there's stuff that we need to talk about, let me know down in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video and I would say see you in the next one. Goodbye guys.